الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay, let me just uh, okay, mute the person on entry. Okay, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for gathering us on this uh, blessed Monday morning, uh, Monday day whereby our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born, and a day whereby he sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged. Uh, for people to fast on this day in celebration or in commemoration of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu um, alaihi wasallam, and as followers and believers in our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, we do whatever it takes you know, to uh, to bring joy uh, to the blessed heart of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah, uh, in uh, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, in allowing us to continue our lessons. Uh, in this uh, blessed book, uh, in this inshallah, uh, uh, of book of Baraka, uh, the glorious treasure, uh, which is uh, written by a scholar of our time, Al uh, Habib Omar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz, Hafizahullah Taala, wa nafa'ana bihi wa bi'alumi fi darin. Right, uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow us to benefit from him and from his knowledge in both abodes. Uh, for anyone who is new to this class, uh, this class has been going on for quite some time, from last year August, right? So, it, um, uh, inshallah, we we plan to start every Monday at nine fifteen. So, if there is no, uh, if there's there's no news, the link that you that you got is the same link every week, every week the same link, the same uh, password, right? So, it, uh, this just Bismillah, just come in uh, around nine nine ten nine fifteen around there. Uh, we we'll begin the Ratib and the al-haddad you know as as uh, as is uh, is the tradition i right, to begin our classes so that we open up our uh, our minds open up our hearts uh, we because when it, when it comes to seeking knowledge right, there comes there, there is a point of um, of the feeding of the soul you know in seeking secret knowledge and this is uh, of the most of the core you know of of of, of knowledge that is in the core of islam which is the essentials of islam the fardu'ain this is fardu'ain right so it um, and it's one of the uh, most one of the first books yeah, the person is to learn in the Shafi'i Madhab. I'm, I'm gonna just say something. Uh, are there people who are co-hosts? I think I put a few co-hosts in this uh, chat. So, oh, is it? I put my mic nearer. Is this is this louder? Can, can people hear me? All right. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. If, if at, at any point in time my my voice goes off sometimes it's a connection at least i actually just uh, fix the connection <laughs> all right alhamdulillah uh you can always put things on the group chat i stood as to just alert me if anything happens or if i share a, a, a screen that's uh, that's not there all right so just just alert me alhamdulillah right, alhamdulillah we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, for this uh, for, ble- for 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 gathering us in this way, uh, and for giving us the blessing of uh, of time, the blessing of health, right, the blessing of uh, inshallah tawfiq, uh, uh, ability right, to see what Allah subhanahu wa taala loves, and of what He loves subhanahu wa taala is that people uh, spend their time, their hours, their minutes uh, in seeking knowledge, you know, in 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 in, uh, in with the intention in uh, perfecting their worship. Of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Alhamdulillah. Right, so today we are continuing with the conditions of the prayer. We're doing this book, like the glorious treasure, uh, which is called the Hira Musharrafa, uh, the glorious treasure on the knowledge required of a Muslim and supplications uh, of different occasions for different occasions. Right, so it's Fardu Ain right, by Al Habib Omar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz. Tamam. Going to the next slide. Bismillah. Right. So this is a page, a page on the, uh, in the, in the book. Right. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right. The glorious treasure. The conditions of the prayer are eight. We're on page eight. Right. The con- the conditions of the prayer are eight. Firstly, purification from both major and minor impurities. Second, the removal of any impurity from clothes, the body, the place, and uh, and and the place of prayer. Uh, third, covering the aura. Fourth, facing the qibla. Fifth, the entering of the prayer time. Sixth, the knowledge that the prayer is obligatory. Seventh, the obligatory action that, that, that any obligatory action should not be confused with a sunnah action, meaning that a person uh, cannot have conviction that 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 that, that uh, an an action of the prayer that is obligatory, right, that he says no is sunnah. Right, like for example, someone who says that the fatiha right, is sunnah, right, or in the, in the prayer, right, or saying that uh, the ruku. 
is sunnah, right? whereas it is uh, compulsory. These are all conditions of the prayer to avoid all that invalidates the prayer. Right? So here, uh, uh, just a revision right, for, uh, for all of us. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, uh, I'm going to make some people uh, a co-host for me, like so that uh, if anyone comes in, uh, just let them in. Okay, if you see anyone, because uh, I while I I'm teaching, I can't see uh, who is coming in. So so whoever is in my co-host, just ensure that people are let in as they come in. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so the first thing here in this uh, uh, in in. At the, at the chapter of conditions of the prayer, right, which are eight, right, conditions, the, the definition of condition in revision, the definition of condition is a state of being that has to exist. So basically, the word condition itself means you know, a state of being. Right? In the in the uh, in the Sharia, in the secret law, condition or or, or, or shurut, you know, a shart, right, condition is it refers to a state of being that has to exist from the beginning of an act to the end of it for the entire act to be valid. Right, so it, uh, when it comes to the prayer, right, the beginning of the act right, would be <coughs> the beginning of the act right, would, to, would be to utter the hamza of Allahu Akbar right, in your takbiratul ihram. Right, so it, um, so so that is that begins the prayer. Right, so when you when you because the the takbiratul ihram is the first part, is the first integral of the prayer. Right, and while you're doing it, the intention right, has to run through your heart. Uh, as you are doing the takbir, uh, the takbiratul ihram. Right? This is um, something that we have uh, we went through in the previous, uh, I think, previous lessons, right? In the intervals of the prayer, right? So it uh, and and up till the end of the mim of the assalamu alaikum, right? The mim of the assalamu alaikum, right? The mim of the kum, right? Uh, up till that point, right? That all of these eight conditions that we see here, right, in these slides, uh, or on the page that we have, those who have the book, it's on the page, right? All of these eight conditions have to exist. And at any point in time, any of these conditions cease to exist or they stop, uh, they, 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 they no longer exist. If it was done on purpose, then the prayer is uh, nullified, right? If it was uh, done accidentally, if it was rectified uh, immediately, Right, within the time it takes to say Subhanallah, right? Uh, uh, then the prayer is still you say safe, right? It's not it's not nullified, right? So that for example, we have taken one and two today. We're going to revise three and then we're going to go on to four today, inshallah. Right? We've taken one and two. So for example, right? Um, okay, okay. One, if it happens, if it happens, you can you can rectify it, right? The moment you go into um, major or minor impurity, uh, a person is. You, you, you're out of the prayer. You can't, you can't rectify uh, that situation. You know, but if a person were to come into the prayer um, uh, in a state of hadath, right? major and minor impurity is basically hadath. Right? So hadath. Um, can people just uh, mute the, their sounds? Eh? Right? Um, so when, when a person <laughs> right, so when a person comes into the prayer, right, uh, if, let's say, uh, so what is major hadas? Major hadas so what is, is is a state, you know, of hadas that would necessitate a person to take the compulsory bath, right? And we have gone through uh, in previous last lessons what would bring a person into major hadas, minor hadas uh, or minor state of impurity, right? Would, what would be something that would necessitate a person uh, uh, to to do their wudu or to renew their wudu, right? So if a person were to come into their prayer, right, and while they are praying, right, uh, they remember. Right, that they remember that uh, they actually nullified their wudu earlier on, and they completely forgot and nullified their wudu, and they, they thought they had their wudu, and they came to their prayer. Right, on this person, right, he is not even in the prayer in the first place. There was no entering into the prayer, right, because the conditions all eight have to be, um, they have to be uh, uh, present for a person to be able to enter into the prayer. Right, so so even though she already has you know uh, done her takbir and she's done her fatiha, right, and then she say, eh, just now I touched my husband, or eh, just now, oh yeah, I remember that I uh, I, I nullified my wudu in some way, you know, or I touched my child, I I, I stinged up my child, for example, and she forgot all about it, and she thought that she still has a wudu, right? So it, uh, at that point, you don't even say that she that she's, she that she needs to break her prayer. She's not even in prayer in the first place. She's not even she didn't even enter the prayer, right? In the first place because she was not, she didn't have the conditions. Like of being able to enter the prayer, right? So, mashallah, you know, in in all of the eight conditions, they have to exist, right? Then a person is able to come into the prayer. So all of them, you know. Uh, so even uh, like for example, 
you know, if someone has najis on, on their body, right, that is not uh, pardoned, right, then there is no way of entering into the prayer, right, unless uh, and we go into the situation whereby, whereby you know, there is no choice or uh, they are unable to remove the najis, right, or and, 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 and so on. We went through those kind of situations of the woman on istihada, right, whereby she has, has najis on her, the kind of najis is pardoned. Right, it's not just still, but it is uh, pardoned. So she's able to enter into the prayer. Alhamdulillah. Right, or purification, like for example, Umar on istihada, right, when she comes into the prayer, uh, she has, there are conditions as to her wudu, what kind of wudu that she has to, that she has to do, the intentions of her wudu. Right, and inshallah, if anyone has any questions, you can uh, always text me or you can uh, post on the, uh, on the chat here. Right, and, uh, or you can refer to the previous lectures to see if it was already, if it was already addressed previously. And if, if you still have questions, you can ask, inshallah. Right, so here, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so uh, today we're taking the part of covering the aura. Right, so just to mention something about the, about, just, just to, 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 re, to repeat this part, this is important. To utter right, the hamza of, that means all of the eight conditions are present at the point of uttering the Allahu Akbar right so for example if someone if someone um, you know uh, wants to pray right so so she sees eh, her, her sleeves are she, for example she didn't notice that her sleeves were not covering her aura up till here right so her, her sleeves were maybe up to like this right so maybe it was it was falling short Right, or maybe she wore a hand glove. You know those kind of hand gloves that uh, you know pe- uh, of society we always usually will wear when you have sleeves like this. Right, so the hand gloves. So if she goes, if she goes Allah, and as she does this, her sleeves are pulled. Right, so if her sleeves are pulled down, and she goes Allahu Akbar, right? and as she was and she was reading, reading the Fatiha, she looks down and she sees eh, you know my she sees herself. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Like she sees, she sees herself uh, that, that, her, that her own that her own wrist is exposed, right? What is she to do at this point? Right? If she looks, eh, my sleeve is exposed. Then she, then she pulls it in. Right? She pulls it in. Right? There's no point doing that because from the very beginning, like her her aura was all shown. She was, didn't even enter the prayer in the first place. Right? She's not in, she's not in prayer. Right? So she's she said, eh. Is, is exposed then pull it in and, and start the prayer right so then there's no point you know trying to pull it pull it pull it and then uh, and it has been exposed for a long time right so and this is something for us to understand all like the aura here right so if let's say someone you know uh, wears their hijab in this way where the neck is shown right? and they forgot they forgot so so, so they went, they're praying so they put, she pulled up her sleeve <laughs> everything's all okay then she goes Allahu Akbar and then she oh yeah, supposed to cover the, the chin. She does this. While in prayer, she does this. Right. That does not do anything for her, right? She, because she had not even entered the prayer. She's supposed to just stop the prayer. And no one stopped the prayer. There's, there's no prayer in the first place. She didn't enter the prayer because of the, the aura being exposed from the very beginning. Right. So she just has just she remembers, eh, hey, my aura, you know, and then so she she just uh, does this, she pulls it forward, and now she can start her prayer, right? If it's all covered, properly covered. Right, so MashaAllah, just to, uh, uh, to, to, to emphasize that point, right? The aurat are areas of the body. If you look at the, foot, uh, the footnote there, the aurat is are areas of the body that must be covered, right? For men, it is from the navel to the knees, and for women, it is the entire body except her face and hands, right? For her prayer, and you mentioned the face from here to here, right? And from here, from, from, from where the ear looks, from where the ear cu- uh, starts to here. Right, and all the hair that's in between is hair that's on the face. So you don't have to cover that hair. Right? Uh, but the hair that is uh, on the head, that's the one that you have to uh, cover. Right, I'm just going to read all the footnotes here. Um, f- uh, footnote here, facing the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba, uh, uh, in the city of Makkah. Right? And then uh, number 14, is, inshallah we will get into it when we go into the lesson. Okay, so just a few things to note about the awrat, covering the awrat. Alhamdulillah. If I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. <laughs> just, 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 uh, or you know, or ask questions. Right? Then um, I will address the questions. Or if I see something that was um, quick, uh, just, just, just alert me to just repeat it. Bismillah. So, in 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 summary, you know, of what we took uh, last week in covering the aurat, right? To note for for women specifically, sleeves, 
right? Because for men, their aurat is between the navel and the knee, right? So for the men in your house, um, your husband, your brother, your son, especially, right? One thing that our teacher would always, um, uh, he would always uh, emphasize is that for men, right? If they are used to wearing a shirt that has a big collar, right? Uh, because when it comes to covering the aurat, it is to cover the aurat from the top and from the sides, right? So which is why. For men, if they they're wearing a shirt with a big collar, right, or if they're having buttons right on their shirt, and their pants are not pulled up above their belly button, right, because for the men, their aurat is from the belly button down to the uh, knees. This is the aurat of the men, right. So if people, if men, you know, they like to use, some of them like to wear their their pants below uh, their belly button, right, so below the stomach, right, but they wear a shirt. And they wear a shirt. So they say, they say, my aura is covered. I wear a shirt when I pray and my aura is covered. Right? But if let's say, you know, if let's say their, their collars are too wide when they ruko, right? it's more of a they ruko. So when they ruko, right, from the side, right, from the side, you, you can look right into their tummy. <laughs> you can see their stomach. Right? So if their pants are not pulled over their belly button, um, their aura is being shown every single time they ruko and they sujud. Right? It's, 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 it's exposed. Right. Or uh, if the buttons are like this, you know, and for women to pay attention about about buttoned up shirts, you know, or abayas, you know, for your girls also, it's something that last week we were mentioning about about for women, for mothers, for aunties, for grandmothers, for sisters, right? Um, you look at your younger, uh, you know, younger sisters and your nieces and your, and your um, daughters. You know, it's kind of school clothing, you know, and and it's buttoned, right? The side, the aura is shown. And, and so many times you see, you know, uh, secondary school girls or JC girls, primary school girls even, right, that um, because the buttons are quite far apart, right, that you can see the aurat from the side, right. So not just for prayer, but just aurat, you know, aurat as a whole, the cover, their modesty, right. So it, um, for this to just, you know, it, uh, uh, teach them to wear something inside, right, to wear a shirt, right, uh, inside, uh, especially for like this, secondary school and JC girls. Right, the to wear a shirt on the inside, right? Or maybe so for them a zip, right? So that it is it's zipped up, right? So um, and if let's say someone is wearing uh, abaya, right, and inside she's not wearing um, something that is covering, right? So when she when she prays, if this if 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 the the partition between the buttons, I hope you know what I'm talking about, right? The the, the two buttons are like this, and there's like a partition, and there's a gap there, right? So usually you can you can put your hand through, right? It's a small gap. So when when they when they ruko, right? If they if people who are working, you know, they go out and they wear this kind of clothing, right? When they ruko, uh, or when they sujud, right? Or even when they're standing, sometimes, right? You can see the uh, the aura, right, from the side, right? So just be particular, right, about this, uh, outside of prayer and inside of prayer, especially inside of prayer, because prayer then the prayer will not be will not be valid right, in the first place. Um, so the sleeves at the point of takbir, right? So, so these are things whereby you know they uh, in in the fiqh, in the fiqh books may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward our uh, you know uh, our teachers greatly on our behalf that like they point out all these things. You know, because people might say, yeah, I know I must cover my aurat, right? But and then and usually you're at home and you wear the you wear the prayer garment, you wear the telekom, right? Um, but even then, right? Don't take it for granted that your aurat is covered, right? So when you take when you do takbir, right? Be be careful about the sleeves. Right, um, especially if you if you are working outside and you have you're wearing long sleeves, right, and you know to to ensure that when you do your takbir, your sleeves they don't they don't uh, sag like that, right, showing off the aura, right, or those people who work in you know when you work in an office, and then there's a button that's there, right? so you button it, right, and there's a gap that's there. All these things you know be particular, right, be particular and uh, and point out to people because sometimes people they don't notice. That these things are actually part of, uh, you know, it, it counts as the aura being shown, right? So, so a lot of times people are not aware, they're not, they don't notice, right? So just, just uh, uh, inform them that you know the, the button that's there, right? There's aura being shown, or if you have, if there's lace right on their clothing, right? There's aura being shown, right? So so they can't pray like that, right? In fact, uh, their aura is not is not properly covered, right, In that way, right? So it, uh, uh, at the point of going down to sujud also. Right, so if you know, you know, as you go down and you stand up from sujud, right, your hand stretches, right. So uh, and sometimes if you're not wearing a prayer garment right, properly, right, or uh, Allahu Alam, you know, uh, you're just having long sleeves, right. That when it stretches past, you know, and you find that uh, it, it 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 pulls up, right. Each time you try and go down and up in sujud, right, then it is actually better that if you can go down into sujud without putting your hands down first, 
right? That means you can, if you can, you know, like control your 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 thigh muscles and go down, <laughs> and then put your hands down, right? And then you come up this on your thigh muscles, right? Without, without doing that, if you know your if you know your sleeves are going are, are too short, if you know that they're too short, you know, especially when it comes to this kind of uh, you know, this kind of like clothing, like uh, like like kebaya kind of clothing or baju kerudung kind of clothing, whereby the sleeves are long and baggy. Right, just be very careful. Basically, basically, the scholars are pointing us to being careful, right? Taking our our worship seriously, uh, uh, being particular right, about all of these things, having our affair with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala set right. Right, so you put in your best, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, is a shakur. He appreciates right, people in and they put in their uh, efforts. So the chin also here. Yeah. Right, it's a thing to point out. Right, not translucent. Right, ensure that your your hijab is not translucent. Uh, a lot of shawls nowadays are translucent. Right, so even if you uh, blade, eh, that you you double it up. Right, the area here ensure that it's not translucent. Uh, the ones at the side, you know, there are those kind of shawls whereby whereby it's all translucent all the way all the way around. So even though you double it up and some areas are not translucent, uh, some areas here and here. It's translucent, and if it, if it affects your prayer, this is not worth it. Right? If wearing that kind of that kind of uh, hijab or that kind of shawl, um, clothing also, uh, telukong also. I right? just ensure go for a darker color or you know a thicker material. I know thicker material is hot. Right? So go for a darker darker color. Right, so that it is uh, is more important that the that the cloth is opaque. Right, then it is. Uh, then that you go for something thin, and then it's translucent. Right, uh, not too short. Uh, when it comes to uh, the the okay, this, one, this is the point that needs to be mentioned. Not too short when it comes to the kain. You know, you know when you wear your your, your telukum, right? Ensure that your that there is sufficient cl- cloth, <laughs> right? From from beneath. These are things that you know you might think that is is common sense, but sometimes you know it's just an oversight. Right, on 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 our part, just not not noticing that it's it's too short for a person, right? So it, uh, when I was um, you know uh, when I was studying, right, the people there they would actually be so particular. They would wear socks right, underneath the tenokong because you know they know when they go down, they come up, you know, uh, the feet tends to be exposed, so they tend to actually wear socks. And it's, uh, it's it's safer lah, socks safer kan, right? You know, if you're at home and you're wearing a, a, a house dress uh, or you're wearing pants, you might as well wear socks if you want to. You know, at least it's safe. You know, or make sure your your kain is so long, <laughs> it's not possible right, for it, uh, for the aurat to be shown. Or you you stand in a way whereby you have the um, you have the tail of it or the train of it right, at the back of you, right, or at the front of you, right, so that you so that so that when you when you move, right, you confirm inshallah, right, it will not be exposed. Be careful, just be careful when it comes to aurat, mashallah. <laughs> Um, okay, and then we mentioned about buttons. Eh? So if our right is uncovered accidentally, right? So accidentally, uh, meaning because of movement, right? There are opinions whereby if because of movement, it is it is it is counted to be on purpose, right? Because a person might was not you know uh, uh, careful to have it flowing right, on on her. But if it was, uh, well, some say it's accidentally, right? It is uh, you, don't, you don't feel it, right? So it was covered accidentally, right? And you know of it, right? you're aware of it. Then you must cover it immediately. Right? So, for example, if you go uh, down to sujud, right, and then you feel straight away, you feel that you know, your your foot is cool at the back. Right? Like something is it's so cool behind. Right? And then, and and if you're able to cover it within Subhanallah, right. So you you hold it at the back and you go down. Right? I mean, or you go like, hey, so cool, my my foot. Then you touch, hey, my foot is is exposed. Right, if that happened within Subhanallah, which is highly unlikely, but if it happened in Subhanallah and you and you pull it within Subhanallah, right, uh, your prayer is safe, right? It's not uh, invalid. But if you sujud, you know, and you think, I think my foot is exposed, you know, and, then, and you reach behind and then and you and don't don't ignore it. Don't like, I think my foot is exposed, but I don't want to know. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't. You're in denial. Like, I think it's exposed. I don't want to know whether it's exposed or not. I don't want to touch. I don't want to, I don't want to feel if it's exposed. Because I know it's exposed. Because I can feel it's cold behind. Right? So if you're in the Khushok gone, eh? Khushok gone. The wa la quata illa bila. But if you if you feel it, you know, that is you feel that it's cool there, you should need to touch to see if it's if it's exposed or not. Especially if it's a wajib prayer. Right? Uh and Zuhur Asar. And it's your prayer that is that is at stake. So if you touch and you feel, eh yeah, it is exposed. And you know you've been in sujud from just now. 
right? From the time he went down, it's definitely more than subhanallah. Definitely more. Your prayer is nullified. It has been nullified. You have to start again. Right? So, and mashallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let um, the efforts of his servants go to waste. Right? So the reward is there. While the prayer is not valid, maybe you did one rakaat, there's a reward for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you the, the reward. Right? But it's not valid. So you have to uh, come out. You're already out of the prayer anyway. The, pray, the, the, the Arab being exposed has brought you out of the prayer already. So you're not even breaking your prayer. Your prayer is your prayers, uh, broken. <laughs> your prayer is nullified. Right? So it, um, to start again. Right? And it's just on, on that note also, if someone were to come into a masjid or musallah or house, you know, and you see someone praying, and you see that the aura is exposed, right? there is actually, in a sense, there is no point you going there and trying to cover the aura. Right? Because the prayer is already nullified. So you see your, your mother praying and you see that eh, her, her foot is completely exposed. Right? And it's been that way for a long time. Right? So you go there and you pull. Right? Well, all you're doing is telling her to stop praying. Right? Because her prayer is already nullified. Right? So what you can do is you can go and say, Ma, your, um, sorry, Ma, your, your uh, aura is exposed. Right. And then you need to start praying again. You need to restart your prayer. You say nicely, lah. You know, mashaAllah. You know, and and the one who's praying, if someone says to you, uh, Afwan, I'm so sorry, maaf, Ache, that kind of thing, and you say your aura is exposed. Right. You have to uh, start again. Right. So you just you just you know um, tell them, and they're not they're not they're not actually in prayer because their aura is exposed. So you can tap them, you can tap their shoulder, right, uh, to tell them that their aura is exposed. You know, uh, mashallah. But of course, if someone does not know that the aura is exposed, and no one told them that the aura, the aura is exposed, then uh, there is no sin, lah. You don't, you don't know. You're not held to account for what you don't know about. All right. Uh, I'm going to get to the questions in a while. So, uh, but if aura is uncovered on purpose, right? Whether or not you un- you cover it uh, within Subhanallah, right? So, for example, uh, if a person is praying, right, and then she has her hand glove up to here, her hand glove. Right, and then she wants to uh, basically, like maybe it's itchy or something, so she pulls it down, right, and then she scratches. It's on purpose, right. So even if she was says, "Oh, I'm going to do for Subhanallah, Subhanallah, put it back," right, um, the prayer is ex- is is already nullified. There's no prayer for her, right, because I mean it's nullified. She has to pray again, start all start all over again, right. If she does it on purpose, of course, scratch over the cloth, lah, scratch under the cloth, right. Uh, uh, Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, this is basically um, our uh, our commentary from last week, uh, summary from last week. If there are any questions? Let me see the questions that have. If there are questions coming in. Mm, okay. Oh, mashallah, a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Waalaikumsalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you are alone, how is our aurat in the prayer? Your aurat in the prayer is the same if you are alone or not alone. The prayer, the aurat of the prayer is basically with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is wherever you are at. Right? So it, uh, the aurat is the same. Whether you're alone, you're not alone, uh, in front of people, doesn't matter. Even if you're in the dark, right, there's n- nobody can see you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you right? for, for the prayer. For the prayer, but however, when it comes to for people, you know, last week we spoke about the aura between people, right? So with people, right? Then there are the specific aura, right? For specific people, right, Around you, uh, so with with men who are not your mahram, is the entire body except the face and the hands, right? Up till here, right? And uh, and your clothing cannot be tight, nor uh, translucent, right? Nor uh, in a sense, uh, uh, like shapely, right? In 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 in. in like, Attractive in in that way, right? So uh, just to be careful about that, uh, in front of women, like other women, uh, fellow Muslimas, it is uh, between the navel and the knee, right? Not not to say that a person is to go around exposing themselves, right? But it's more of to allow women to breastfeed, right? It's more of that, you know. So that in a sense, you know, when, when you're in a, in a musalla and you want to breastfeed, your baby is there, right? And the other other women around, right? That it's easy for her to actually uh, uh, feed her baby. Right, but it's, it's, it's of course uh, not for a person to, to just uh, expose themselves for no reason right? and, and of course it is it's, it's highly macro right, to expose uh, uh, parts of your especially the, the more intimate aura right? um, even though it's not the privates but it's like for example the shoulder you know um, the I don't know Allah Alam, the cleavage that kind of thing right? uh, for no reason right? for no reason right? if, especially even, even if I'm of other women and especially in our time in our time whereby there is um, you know, all these things going on uh, about same gender and stuff, right? Just to be more vigilant, 
right, more vigilant about this. Um, uh, for our right in front of non-Muslims, right, if uh, last week you were talking about it, for our right for our non-Muslim women, of course for men it's the same as men lah. Right, for non-Muslim women, um, is whatever is is normally shown, right. So right, for example like this, see like this. If I'm in front of a, a non-Muslim woman, it's not an issue. This is not an issue. Something that is normally shown for me to do work. So if I, if I can wash, you know, if I have to do, it's, it's, it's okay, right? Uh, so take off my socks, that kind of thing, you know, and even up to uh, uh, the, of our scholars who say up to the middle of, middle of, the, of the shin, right? So in a sense, you have to roll up your, your, your pants so to, for, other, for non-Muslim uh, women, right? Or for women that, um, in front of women that you kind of suspect they might take pictures of you. <laughs> okay, for them, then you actually cover up, right? Actually, it's on you to, uh, to cover your own aura. Right. Um, uh, I'm just gonna answer the questions here. Uh, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. What must we do if our soul is exposed accidentally and only realized after we make salams? Uh, if you're very sure that it was exposed during the prayer, right? So you're very sure eh, you're, it was exposed during the prayer, then you must redo the prayer. Right? Meaning that you are now very sure that your prayer was not valid. Right, so you must redo the prayer, and right, so that after you give salam and your and then your 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 son tells you, hey, the entire time your you know um your your soul was exposed, right, and then you just why didn't you tell me earlier? <laughs> after I finished praying, then you tell me. And I just remember my you know around my grandmother, there was one time she was praying, uh, and then uh and her soul was exposed, you know, uh, and then uh the people in the house they took picture of it, <laughs> and then they didn't tell her and, and back then back then until it was printed out, and uh and then they showed her and then she was like, why did you tell me? At that, th- at that point in time, you should have told me that my that my art was exposed. Don't take a picture and then show me after that. Like, what's the point in that? Right, so Masha, I still remember she got she was, she was like she, when she was Masha she she was um, uh, educated you know in in fiqh, right in in, in in law and she was like like why do you all do this? <laughs> in Malay lah, she's saying that. Alhamdulillah, you know uh, lessons eh, lessons to, to tell people when their art is exposed. So I don't wait until they finish a prayer. Tamam. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, Question Can we hold on to our sleeves By our fingers When raising our hands So this means that Our fingers will not be Their usual takbir student. Yes you can uh, Instead of clenched fist right? Holding on to our sleeves Is permissible Okay okay. This is to, to differentiate Between what is sunnah And what is wajib Right So when it comes to Between sunnah and wajib Right The wajib is Prioritized Right, wajib is prioritized. So what is wajib here? Wajib is to cover your aurat. You're covering your aurat is, 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 is wajib. To raise your hands in takbir is sunnah. Is sunnah. Right? So so if you want to still get the sunnah, and, and, and mashallah, we should try our best to always uh, uh, to try you should always you should always try our best to get the sunnah. Um, so so let's say for example this is a, this this sleeve, eh? this sleeve is a really <laughs> interesting sleeve. Alright, so you go like this, right, and then you do this, right. So you 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 tuck it between your 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 thumb. You can see it. If you have big enough sleeves, lah, <laughs> to do that. Right, but if your sleeves are too too small, and you do like this, so also can, right. But if you just do like this, you hold it, right. You see here. Uh, you can see my hand, right, because the aurat it has to be covered from the top, and from the side. Right, so to be to be careful, if your sleeves are like this, you need to you need to wrap it around your wrist. Right, you need to wrap it and, and tuck it somehow like that. See, so in this in, in every angle, right, there is it, it your your. <laughs> I'm so sorry if this looks very uh, in in your face, <laughs> right? But but you see that in in every angle, right, you can't see the arm that's there, right? So 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 first and foremost, covering the arrow is wajib. So if you don't want to raise your hands, it's okay also, right? Because raising the hands is sunnah, right? So your prayer is still valid. So if let's say you have really short sleeves, right? Not not really short sleeves, but in this, it's right up to, you know, it's right here, right? And you know if you raise, it will go down, you know it. And there's no way for you to hold it. You you, you can't find it because it's so tight, right? So what do you do? You don't raise your hands. You leave your hands down, and because raising the hands is sunnah, uh, it's not wajib. So what do you do? Allahu Akbar And you bring your hands in Right And even putting the hands in Is sunnah It's not wajib Right So this is why It is important to learn sunnah and wajib uh, So that if 
to learn sunnah and wajib is not for us to leave the sunnah. To learn sunnah and wajib is to know when it comes to sunnah and wajib, right, you hold the wajib. Uh, if you have to choose between sunnah and wajib, of course you hold the wajib, right, and you don't uh, compromise the wajib because of a sunnah, you know, to, to, to be able to rank things. Right, so we learn the sunnah to know what nullifies our prayer and what does not nullify our prayer. Right, so if a person's sleeve is really right up to the to the to the edge, like this, to the edge, right, um, uh, and and they know if they move their hand in any way, right, uh, their their aura will be exposed. So I'm wondering how she's going to go to sujud. Eh? <laughs> it's going to be very difficult, right, to actually do sujud. But if let's say she knows that, you know, then she can leave her hand straight down, right, and she can pray, uh, in a way to to maintain her aura the entire time. Right, so of course, uh, for the question that is here, right, if you clench your fist, it's not an issue. Right, it's not an issue. Uh, your prayer is valid. You lose out on the sunnah. Right, you lose out on the sunnah, the rewards of the sunnah. So if you do this, right, if you do this, you still have the sunnah because the the fingers are are, are up, right, in your in your takbir. Right, but if let's say you have to do this, like that, it's okay. Right, so you get the sunnah of raising the hand at least. Right, if not for this, because in the takbir, right, the raising of the hand. There is a lot of sunnahs, about 10 sunnahs right, in raising the hand. Which inshallah we will go through it when we go to the sunnahs of uh, doing takbir. We have not come into the sunnahs yet, I think. We are now right at the wajibs only. Right? So, just, uh, so basically it's loss of sunnah. Right? But don't, um, don't <laughs> lose the aurat. Right? Keep the aurat, inshallah. Um, can we not tell a person if their aurat is uncovered? <laughs> Um, I asked my teacher this question. Like, if I see someone's aura uncovered, because if she doesn't know, then her prayer is uh, valid, right? <laughs> right? I'm not, not, not that it's valid. She's not held to account. Uh, she's not held to account, right? Because she doesn't know that her aura was exposed. And she said that you know, if it was you, right? But then again, subjective, eh? Right? Because if it was, it was it was her, she would want someone to tell her, right? If her aura was exposed, right? To get her, you know, um. Her, her prayer right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she also said that if you know what if the person right, uh, knows that their aurat is exposed but they dismissed it means they did they had, in, in Arabic they'll say they, they're very lax you know about matters of the religion right this is the point of da'wah I mean, but you go there and you, you just say uh, nicely right nicely you mention to them that your prayer is not not, uh, not not valid you have to pray again Right, so you can just uh, and you make it a point of, of conversation lah. Uh, you can talk about the the conditions of the prayer and the aura and everything. Then from there, you can also talk about the the chin because many of people in our society they don't pull the chin, the the, the part here. Right. So uh, the answer is you need to tell them, <laughs> tell them, tell them that the aura is exposed. Uh, Allahumma salli ala sidina Muhammad. Now, how much of the forehead? Okay, if uh, for Hanafi Mazhab, uh, we are doing Shafi Mazhab. Right, so uh, I will speak to the whoever is asking about Hanafi Mazhab separately. Right, so, uh, so, so just not to confuse people. Right, so we're speaking about the Shafi Mazhab. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, Afwan, eh? sorry. Mm, what if we found there's one piece of hair or one strand of hair exposed at the face, and when you pull it, it's already it's not uh, it's not attached to the scalp. Uh, then that's okay, not an issue. So when you pull it, it goes right out. Right, it means it's loose hair. It's loose, eh? it's not an issue. Right. Uh, if, if one hair exposed on the face, then at the end of the prayer, you found that when you pull it, it is already detached. Meaning that it is, it is, oh, no, no, same question. Yeah. Basically, it is it's loose hair. Right. So loose hair, there, there is no, there is no, um, it does not nullify your prayer. Right, so it, uh, even but last week you mentioned that some of these uh, telecoms, right, the, the 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 cloth, the hair, if you tie it like a bun without wearing the inner, this this inner that's here, if you don't wear this inner, the hair tends to stick out, right, from the back. Just be careful about that. I right? don't allow for the. I mean, don't pray with the kind of hair sticking out through the cloth. Just wear an inner. Just to be more, um, uh, just to be more vigilant. Right, is a Muslim's hair is it all right uh, with a non-Muslim lady? Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> right. Yes. Um. Of course, there there is uh, there are opinions that say, uh, no, right. So, Allahu Alam, Allahu Alam, right. So for me, usually I will uh because people take pictures nowadays anyway, right. So just just to be vigilant. You don't know when in your picture might be might appear somewhere else. You know, just just if this this okay, just keep your uh your outright 
you know, uh, covered sufficiently. Right? So you don't have to wear like something like fully, uh, like, like, you know, like how you would do in front of a man, right? But, you know, at least like a shawl, you know, something just to cover the, uh, the beauty of it. Right. But there is an opinion right, whereby it is not uh, all right in front of. Uh, so, for example, if you're in the bathroom and you want to do your wudu, right, so you lift a bit, right, or, or you pull your hijab down, in sense you pull to the side, to the, to the, to just, just to the back. So, what is needed right, to be exposed is okay. Right. So, so, if you're in the bathroom and then you want to wash your arms, you know, and then people come in and out, you're in a non Muslim land, right, so it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's like this. It's okay. You can wash it in front of them, especially the parts of the wudu. Right. Of course, not in front of men, in front of uh, uh, women, right? non Muslim women. And Allah knows best. Okay, Alhamdulillah. That's the last question. Okay, we're going to the next part. Uh, Bismillah. Right. So, facing the Qibla. So, here in the fourth condition, right, in the fourth uh, condition that, that of the prayer, is facing the Qibla. And facing the Qibla is with the, by the chest and not necessarily the face. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention about, about the Aurat. Uh, thing just now that when it comes to conditions from the beginning of the prayer to the end of the prayer right so if a person uh, has not finished doing the salams saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah what is wajib is assalamu alaikum right wa rahmatullah is sunnah right so just be very clear assalamu alaikum wajib wa rahmatullah sunnah right so it is a, a sunnah to actually not move your face when you say assalamu alaikum then you go wa rahmatullah and you turn to the uh, you turn your face to the side right why like especially for for us women that like, is that sometimes if you if let's say if let's say you were to wear something that is like a shawl that's a bit tight right for example so when you go assalamu alaikum because the whole time you're, you're praying your face is is this way usually you don't really have a, a reason to move your face left and right unless to the, to the end of the prayer so when you go assalamu alaikum right so you have safe you know to the last meme the prayer is valid. And then if you go wa rahmatullah and in, in, in turning if if this if eh, if this gets pulled as you turn and it gets pulled and then the awrat is shown. Right? Uh, it's okay because you finish your prayer at Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, but if you go Assalamu Alaikum right, and then the entire thing gets pulled. Right? So then you have not finished your prayer. Right? But, but because you've not finished saying the meme of Assalamu Alaikum. Right, so then the Aura gets exposed by, by your own movement right, to, the, to the side right, at the end of the prayer. Right, so, mashallah. Same thing with here, the Qiblat. Right, so, the Sunnah is mashallah, the Sunnah. So, to keep your position, after you finish your tahya, to keep your position, and you go, Assalamu alaikum, and just your head, wa rahmatullah. Right, you, don't, you don't move your entire chest. Right? But you know, if, someone does that, if someone does this, Assalamu alaikum. You know, where, where they move the entire, <laughs> the entire body to the side, right? Then they nullify their own prayer, right? Because it is, it is what needs to face the kiblat is your chest, right? Uh, the face, you know, is macro to make your face go around, or, uh, look around when you're, when you're praying, but does not nullify the prayer, right? So it's, it's macro, but it doesn't nullify the prayer, right? So the chest has to face the kiblat from the beginning of the prayer to the end of the prayer. So one thing to, to note here is that, you know, if a person were to, were to walk into saf, you know, and then, and then while that, their body is still not towards the kiblat, right, but they turn their face to the kiblat, and they, Allahu Akbar, because they want to get the, the, the raka'at with the imam. Right, so they, or they're running to the saf, you know, or like for example, tarawih. Right, tarawih, they are getting up, or, or, or some, for some reason or other, their, their chest is not towards the kiblat, but they turn their face to the kiblat. Right, and then they go Allah, so they, they turn around and they go Allahu Akbar right, in that way. Um, the A ah of the Allahu Akbar, right, they have to be facing the Qiblat before they say Allahu Akbar of the Takbiratul Ihram. Because that is a wajib of the prayer. Right, so just be uh, careful right, about these things. Eh? Shaitan, he plays with human beings you know, and he makes them uh, unmindful. Right, so they tend to just do things and they don't realize that they actually you know, did not um, fulfill the conditions of the prayer. Right. In the direction of the Qiblat, right, of, of the Kaaba, where is the Qibla? It is in the uh, direction of the Kaaba, generally. Uh, so here, uh, if you can see the Kaaba, right, if you can see the Kaaba at Mecca, right, uh, you need to face the Kaaba by, you know, in front, you need to see and, and face the Kaaba in front of you. Right. So you don't just, you know, follow the staff and then you're, not, you're facing here and the Kaaba is over there. Right. And I've seen people in, in Mecca whereby, whereby they they, don't, they just follow the staff straight. Yeah, but the Kaaba's over there. 
Right? So they have they have to actually turn right, to the Kaaba. Uh, those who are far from 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 the Kaaba, then it's general the general direction of Mecca. This is the direction. For the one who is traveling, right, a traveler, uh, he is allowed to face the direction of travel for Sunnah prayers only, and right? not for wajib prayers. For wajib prayers, he needs to face the Qibla. Right? So if a person has no choice but to pray in an aeroplane, right, and, the, and, and a person has, is unable to, to tell where's the, the Qibla or unable to stand uh, in the prayer, because to stand in the prayer is compulsory to stand. So, and some airlines, they don't allow you to stand. Right? Some airlines, they actually allow you to stand. You can ask the airline. Right? I know um, like Oman Air, they allow people to pray at the back. Right? So you can actually bentang, they will give you, they will give you a sajadah. And and you can see from the from the map where where is Mecca, right? Uh, and you can go in, and and in fact the the aeroplane itself has a has a direction where the Kaaba where the Kaaba is. So they say they point this way backwards towards the tail of the aeroplane or this way or this way, right? So you can actually uh, aim, you know, uh, towards the back, and then you can see you know on the map on the on the aeroplane you can you can tell where, where whether you are, you know, the prayer timings or like over which land you are flying over. You can tell, and then there are ways of, of doing it. And it's, there's an app right now whereby wherever you're flying, because uh, they have Wi-Fi on the on the plane, then mashallah technology. Like you can actually tell whether you have already come into Zuhur. You know, anyway you're praying, you you you're, you're traveling, you're doing, you're gonna do qasar anyway and, and jama. Right? So you're going to be uh, combining your prayers anyway, like or subo to see the sky, that kind of thing. Right? So but basically, basically there are not to assume straight away that the airline uh, does not allow people to stand and pray. Don't assume straight away because there are airlines that they, 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 have, they, they have no issue. They don't mind at all. Right? And there are airlines that actually have a musallah at the back. Right? Uh, Saudi right? Saudi has a musallah at the back. So you can just, you know, and if that if that actually exists uh, at the back and someone prays sitting down and they actually, actually, they're actually able to move and they're not, you know, um, uh, not in need of a wheelchair or anything like that, right? then they need to actually uh, go to that area right? and pray. It's, it's compulsory. Eh? Right? So to face, so for, for, for wajib prayers, must face the Kaab, uh, the, the Qibla. For Sunnah prayers, uh, you face the, the, the direction of travel. For Sunnah prayers, right? So if someone is in the, in the aeroplane, right, or if you are in the car, you tra- you're driving um, uh, to Malaysia, and even for short travel, right, even for, like you're going like from from the east of Singapore, you're going you know up to Punggol, you're like going to wherever you're going, right. That if you're in the car, you can pray. You can pray to rakats duha. You can pray to rakats. You know, any any Sunnah that you want to pray, pray. Right, because uh, Sunnah, you can pray without facing the Qiblat as long as you're in the direction of travel. Right? So, so if the car were to, go, were to go off course and go somewhere else and it comes back. Right? So a person can't go for a joy, right? <laughs> like, and then pray, uh, pray Sunnah. Can't do that. Uh, it has to be, you have to go in the direction of travel. Right? That is your Qiblat. Uh, in the direction of, cab, of travel. Right? So mashallah, um, to be, uh, to just be clear. Like, and mashallah, don't, don't waste time. So when you're you're in the aeroplane, you're in the bus, you're going to KL, right? Uh, and it's at night, for example, right? Pray your tahajud, right? Pray your uh, witr. You can pray whatever you want to pray, pray, right? Because you might as well, you know, it's, it's of the greatest um, uh, one of the greatest ibadah. Right? To note when uh, just a, just a note that, that he that he mentions here when picking up your child, right? So those women who are praying, right? And then your child, uh, the baby is crying, right? And you're going to pick up the child. Right, so just to ensure that you do it in a way that you don't turn your chest away from the qibla, right? Don't you know? This is very important for us to, to to take note, and also the nudges we mentioned before in the in the previous uh, class about you have to be very sure the child does not have nudges uh, in his diapers, right? That before you you carry up you pick up the child. Right? Just be very clear about that, right? Um, so don't move your chest away from the qibla. So when you do the full salams. Uh, Salam assalamu alaikum right up to that point and then you move your head right so uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah there is no sunnah of nodding the head there's no sunnah eh? so so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and you come back assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah right? there is no sunnah of of of, of barakatuh uh, unless you are praying jenazah right? so, uh, sunnah jenazah then you can say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh right? you, you do it that way but for normal prayers, wa rahmatullah, stop. Right? Not to increase because you follow our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Allah. Okay, I'm just going to uh, finish this part and then uh, we will take questions. It's 10.30 already. 
Mm, what is prayer time? Sorry. Uh, okay, tamam. I'll take questions first. There are questions. Allahumma salli ala sallina Muhammad. Mm. Okay. So the question here is that... Mm, wait. Okay, so so basically, if you see ladies in different styles of prayer, right, and their dress is a bit short or something, in, especially in international uh, situations, yeah, you just you assume that they are on a different madhab, right? Because uh, you don't know there are other madhabs, um, and when it comes to the aurat, right? So other madhabs. A question here: What what about if you go to a Muslim salon? Then now when the hair is on is a non-Muslim Muslim salon, right? All our oldest is like that. Like how is it? Okay, the thing about it is that um, uh, salons are not uh, necessary, are they? Right. So if you want to cut, like if you, for example, if you want to like a barber to cut your hair, right? Um, actually, there are many. There are many um, Muslim barbers if you want, right? Uh, if that's if you if you want to do that. Right, um, but uh, if you want to style your hair, you want to do, you know, Allahu Alam. Right, uh, uh, basically, it's a matter of the religion. Right, so Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so it's 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 not a daruri situation. Uh, it's not a like a necessary situation to do. You know, uh, to actually go and um, if it's something that is not necessary lah. Right, so like for for example, for myself, like my I cut my hair. Myself, <laughs> right? But uh, because I, I mean, you can just cut it, or your sister cuts cuts it for you, your mother, your husband, your somebody in the house. If you don't really care, you know, to style it, you know. Um, but if you care to style it, then they are, they are. I'm sure. I, I, I'm, I know of. Uh, I, I've, I've seen those advertisements, right? But they are. Right? They, they exist. And so the the Muslim women they do, um, are they are able to do it. But of course, you can go on the opinion that there are opinions about it, that the hair is okay. Right, to be exposed, right, but then again, when you go to the salon, um, yeah, to ensure that there's no men around and everything lah, and just just to make sure about that, right. So, so you can go on that opinion. That is, it does that the opinion. The opinion is a, a valid opinion, right, and that is it is there. Right, for non-Muslims, you can see your hair, right. Uh, Allah alam, and Allah knows best. Okay, uh, okay. There's one more question. Is there such thing as hormat waktu prayer? For example, you pray when you're on the hospital bed. Okay, this prayer called hormat waktu, right? Uh, is something that uh, okay. What what it means is that it is that there is a principle in Islam whereby if you're unable to do something completely, then don't fall short of doing it partially, right? It's a principle in Islam, right? So if you can't do something to its fullest, then do of it as much as you can. And that is the instruction of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's first, right? But because you're unable to fulfill all the conditions, right, or do all of the integrals of the prayer, the prayer is still, depending on situation, it might be invalid, right? So that would require you to pray again later on, and right? because the prayer that you prayed was as far as you're able to. Right, uh, in that situation, that was what's compulsory on you in that situation, but also compulsory on you is to repeat the prayer, right, to do a qada, right, of the prayer. So I'm going to give you an example, eh? um, For example, if a, if a girl, a right, secondary school girl, uh, she's at, she she she's in school, wearing uniform, right, uh, and she didn't ex- expect to stay late that day, right. So she has to pray zuhur at this point, right. She tries her best, she cannot find anything to cover herself. Because right, she's wearing skirt, wearing uh, sleeves, you know, short sleeves, she can't do anything to cover herself, right? And she has to pray because the whole is gonna go out, right? So she prays, however she she is, however she is. Right? I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying that you know uh, you can just do that, right? but it's after her searching, right? She asks around, anybody got telekong, anybody got you know got got, 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 got jacket, anyone has a that like she asks around, nobody has anything to give her, right, to cover her outright. Right, um, or maybe she's alone by herself, you know, on a bus or something, and she has to pray Maghrib. And Maghrib is going out, and she's in a uniform, and she can't. And there's, there's no way around this except to just pray, um, you know, uh, however she is. She prays, okay. She prays, doing what she's able to do, to the best of her ability. That is compulsory on her to do, 
to do what, it, what she needs. She's able to do to the best of her ability. But is her prayer valid? No. Her prayer is not valid. But she has saved herself from sin of missing the prayer. Uh, that's the point of it. She saved herself from sin of missing the prayer on purpose. Right? So, so in, that, in, that, in, that, in that sense, the angels will not write down uh, the sin right, of her living the prayer. She prayed to the best of her ability. Prayer is not, it's not valid. Right? So then, later on when she gets home, and she can cover herself properly, she needs to repeat the prayer. Right? So this is what they, you will hear people say, Hormat waktu. Right? Basically, to hormat the waktu. Right? But it's a compulsory prayer to do, right, to the best of your ability. And then it's compulsory to repeat it. Right? Depending on situation, lah. There are there are situations whereby it's not the, a person is not uh, bound to repeat it. Uh, but then this is, this is to go into different uh, situations, right, of it. So I hope that is clear. Uh, I wanted to mention one thing about. See, I forgot about this one. Mm, mm, about also, if let's say, it, uh, if at any point in time, right, uh, in your life, right, that you know that a prayer that you have prayed in the past, if it comes to your attention that it was not valid. Uh, so, like for example, uh, there was once in NUS uh, when I was in university, one of the musolas there, right, in engineering, like there was a, there was an MRI machine at the bottom of that block, basically a, a magnetic machine, right. So when the kiblat was found at that musola, the compass pointed to the machine, not to the kiblat, you know. So people been praying there, uh, not knowing that the kiblat is wrong, right. So they happened during my time. So when I was praying there, and then my brother was with me, and my brother was like, like, hey, you know, the Qiblat on, at that block points somewhere else, you know. And the Qiblat here is somewhere else. And we were thinking, ah, eh? <laughs> the Qiblat is, 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 is off. So we went to Google Maps, right? and we checked Google Maps. True enough, the Qiblat was wrong, right, in that musola. The Qiblat uh, on the other block was correct. Right, so and then we found that that, that, that building engineering, right, there was a magnetic machine at the bottom, so that all the the compass point down, right, to the machine, right. So it, uh, from from Google Maps, the maps itself, right, from the internet, you could tell the kiblat was actually the other way, which was in line with the kiblat at Masjid Tendera, and at the other block, right. So we had to put up a poster at that time, right, put up a poster to say the kiblat is wrong, and it has been wrong for quite some time, um, and the kiblat is here now, right, and then to say. That those who have prayed here, you know, whatever prayers that they have prayed here, and they remember, they must redo the prayers. There's no sin on them. There's no sin. Because they prayed their prayers. Right? But it's not valid. Uh, so they must redo the prayer. No sin on them. Insha- inshallah, double, double, the, double the pahala, eh? double the reward. Right? So they have to, you actually have to redo the prayer. Right? So, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. So if you, if you know that you were, to, you, you were praying uh, before the coming of the prayer time, the entire time, you, you, if you knew that, you know, or like that day when I went to my cousin's house, I, I assumed this, the Qiblat, because there's this kind of sujadah whereby there is no front and back. It's just, it's just a, a rug, right? So I, for some reason, I assumed the Qiblat was this way. So I went there and I prayed, right? And then one week later, when I came to the same house, I found everybody praying the other way. <laughs> right? So it's, for some reason, I assumed it was that way when I, went, when I went there. Everybody was praying the other way, right? So when that happened, I saw, eh, oh, the Qiblat is that way. It never occurred to me to ask her where's the Qiblat. But I just saw the, the sejada. So it was on me at that point to redo my last week's prayer. That I know now is not sah. Because I was praying in a completely different direction. <laughs> it's, the, it's the exact opposite direction. But no dosa. Because you don't know, no sin. Because you don't know. You didn't know. Right, this is the answer, to answer the thing about hormat waktu. It is compulsory. It is, it is, it is, it is repeat. Eh? It is compulsory in Islam to do as what you are able to do. Right, in, a, in any situation. The best that you can. Right? And if it falls short of its conditions, then it is not valid, right? but it saves you from the sin. Right? And then to repeat it later on, and may Allah give you uh, greater than, than, than what uh, we, you know, subhanAllah, on, on our efforts. May Allah give us uh, reward. Alhamdulillah. We're going to stop there for today. Uh, she mentions here about the hospital bed. Uh, and said, inshallah, next week. Um, oh, yes. The Book of Sunnahs. Again, just mention because we have a, we have a book on five hundred sunnas uh, in the prayer. Just read it, you know, uh, to be exposed to more sunnas. Uh, inshallah, be exposed to more light from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every sunnah that uh, that has that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made a sunnah, um, it is you know its, its effect in the heart of a human being is strong. Uh, it it connects a person to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a light. That connect someone to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, just go uh, the person who reminded me, because every week I forget 
to go to, to go through it. Um, just to mention, right? So from the beginning of the of the book, the sunnah of the prayers are five hundred, right? So the first sunnah that we uh, that we took, I'm going to mention ten sunnahs today. Five from 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 before for those who have not heard it, and then five more. Eh? So the first sunnah is to azan, and it's for only for men. Right? It's, it's, it's sunnah for men to azan. Right? So if the radio has done it, off the radio and do it, <laughs> do it. Ask the men in the house to do it. It's sunnah for for iqama, uh, for women. If it's all women there, for you to, to do iqama is sunnah. Um, it is to uh, to to stand, you know, uh, firmly first. It means to be to be at rest, you know, standing before you come to the place. Sunnah. It means not to not to walk and then and then you know, not whereby you have a rest point. They have a rest point, right? And then you Allahu Akbar, right? Um, and then uh, number four, mm, for men, right? For men uh, to have their feet slightly apart. Right, it means for, for men it is the left the, the same amount as a the shoulder, their feet. Right? For women just slightly apart. Right? Don't put so close together that you might lose your balance. But close, eh? Woman is all everything is 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 in. Right? For for men is is all about shoulder shoulder uh, width. The uh, about. Hmm. Okay, that's it. So number four is to. Be, the number four is for the feet to be slightly apart. Number five is that it is apart with regards to the shoulder. That's number five. Right? So number four is slightly apart. Number five, reg- apart with regards to the shoulder. Number six, to look at the point of sujood uh, throughout your prayer, except that when you are doing ruku, which later on they will speak about. Right? So at the entire, the whole time in your prayer, look at the point of the, po- the spot, spot the, the sujood spot. Mm. Number seven... Right. Uh, to maintain, so to look at it at the point of sujud right, is uh, sunnah, right, at the spot of sujud. To maintain that, 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 that gaze or that look that, at that point the entire time you're praying is another sunnah. You see how there are two sunnahs there, right, to maintain it the entire time, right, uh, for as long as your eyes are open, right, to maintain it there. And then number eight, uh, to... to Lower your your head a little bit, right? So don't pray like this, even if you're able to look at this, at the point of sujud. Right? But the, the, the sunnah is to do this, right? Just to 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 lower your head a little bit, um, out of uh to show you know uh that, to to remind yourself that you are standing in front of your creator, you're standing in front of the king of kings, right? Uh, the king of the day of day of judgment, subhan, subhanahu wa taala, uh, siwak, okay, uh, to do the siwak. Okay. Um, MashaAllah uh, If a person is able to Do something about your prayer garment To, to, to sew Or to tie Right So if you can If you can like, have a cl- Like tie to the, to the To the string or whatever Or make a pocket So you So you'll never um, You'll never forget To see what Right To do see what Before two rakaats Is better than uh, See what With uh, To do see what Before two rakaats Is better than Than praying 70 rakaats 70 As our Professor Wazam Has informed us Right, that's number nine and number ten um, for <laughs> for men. Yeah, for men. So you can you can you can you know uh, teach the men in your house, right? Uh, that for men is sunnah for them to pray uh, with uh, uh, with a shirt. Right? So don't just take off the shirt because the aurat is is belly button to knee. Right? You know to pray with a shirt. Right? In fact, a clean shirt. Uh, uh, and if, if they want to wear. Uh, you know, a, a, a shawl, you know, the, the, the reda. You know how they, they wear the... It's from the sunnah of Islam to put this, the cloth. There's a cloth there. Right? Uh, and then uh, to uh, the sunnah for them also, right, that when they wear their sarong, right, to actually wear pants underneath. <laughs> so not to pray with just sarong with no pants. Right? To wear pants underneath their sunnah. It's a sunnah, mashallah. And the sunnah of Islam um, said, you know, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, the woman. Right, who wear pants underneath their dresses, right? Because it covers, it, it maintains your aura. Right? You know that if you fall, the wind blows. You know, you you just you're, you're putting in more effort. Right, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, we'll stop there for today. Wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Someone's asking about about lowering the shoulders. 
right? Uh, it's, it's, the sunnah is that it's best that uh, like this, right? And then you lower the head. Okay? Allahu a'lam. Allahu a'lam. Wa sallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha anna allaha yarzukana alamana fi'an wa amalan khalisan wa qbulna hunsa ta'anim wa dalala ala al-khuda wa yusaru bi qawbun nabi Muhammad sallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam wa ila arwahi mu'alimina mashaykhina wa dhawil hukuki alayna wa ila hadratin nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam al-fatiha Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilaik Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wal asr Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam